Hey, Indian Creek 8th grade students. Welcome to today's e-learning lesson. It is Wednesday, April 22nd. I hope that everyone had a great day yesterday. Um, it's, it's looking like we're going to have kind of a rainy, dreary day today. I'm not sure what it's like out there, um, but I still hope that everyone's had a great morning so far. And uh, let's jump into our daily e-learning updates. So, for yesterday, we had 44 out of 51 students who submitted the attendance. That's great. That's that's uh, more than we had for Monday, um, which was very good to see. Uh, we only had eight people as of maybe about 15 minutes ago who had completed the Chapter 5 response. Um, I did see yesterday there were some of you who turned in either the Chapter 3 or Chapter 4 responses a little late. That's totally fine. Um, you're able to submit those assignments for um, additional points at any time. So don't feel like just because you missed the original deadline that you can't uh, still submit those for some credit. And then also, if you're one of those people who did and I gave you some feedback asking for, for some more or, or saying you kind of had you know, needed to change your answer, modify what you wrote about, you can make those changes and resubmit those so that you make sure that you get credit. So that's the whole um, idea behind doing those extra assignments is it's a way for you to get that additional credit. It's just making sure that you get all the way up to the expectations of the assignment in order to get that additional credit. You know, it's like you're going above and beyond. Um, and so just making sure that that you're getting there um, is the whole goal with that. So just be on the lookout for that kind of feedback in those documents for those of you who submitted it. And then <clears throat> we are up to 42 out of 51 people who have submitted the form for the civil rights activist slide. So there's still nine people who have not submitted it. Um, it's all right. I'm hoping that most of those people just forgot to turn it in. You know, they decided on the figure that they were going to do their presentation on. Um, but if not, you know, just make sure and, and more emails will be going out today about that as well. All right. So for our class plan for today, we'll go over the Google form. There's a new poll question for today for language arts. We will be talking about the allegory chart because that was the assignment yesterday in language arts class. Uh, we'll be previewing chapter six of Animal Farm, which is the assignment today to read chapter six. And then our optional assignment today is to do a vocab review on Kahoot. And I already sent out the link and pin and everything for that as well. Um, and then we'll just briefly review the civil rights activist assignment. And then should be should be pretty short and sweet. Don't have any um, chapters to go over or any new big things to introduce. So this should be a pretty quick video. Um, so for the journal highlights from yesterday, the, the question was you could only save three ice cream flavors for the rest of time. Which three are you going to save? And I was a little surprised by um, the, the number one and then also one of the ones that was not in the top three. So the top three, um, which is not quite exactly in order, but if, if Indian Creek eighth graders were to create their, their favorite sundae with three scoops of ice cream, those three scoops would be mint chocolate chip, vanilla, and, and cookie dough, which um, a little surprising because if you look there at the top five, mint chocolate chip was the favorite amongst eighth graders, then vanilla, which I know usually it's vanilla, then cookie dough, then cookies and cream, and then finally chocolate all the way in at number five. I would have thought chocolate would have been much higher. Um, and then the one that just missed would have been coffee ice cream, um, which I was happy to see because I'm sure all of you remember how much I enjoy coffee. Coffee ice cream is no different. Um, but yeah, just, just interesting to see um, which ones did well and which ones were low. But definitely a surprise that chocolate did not come in until, I guess technically it tied for fourth, um, but I would have definitely thought that would have been in the top three. But yeah, mint chocolate chip, the most favorite ice cream flavor amongst a choice of three for the Indian Creek eighth grade students. So uh, with that in mind, let's jump over to today's Google form. Um, first part, Animal Farm. I asked for you to read chapter six today. Um, written version is on page 21. 
and the audiobook is around an hour and 18 minutes, and it's about a 17 minute long chapter. So not quite as long as chapter five. Um, it's about 17, maybe 17 and a half minutes. And then just mention that we'll be talking about the allegory chart, which we'll be doing in a, in a hot second here, and then previewing chapter six as well. Um, and then the optional assignment is the Kahoot. Um, and now it's just because we're a little bit farther into the unit, the requirement is that you now need to get at least an 80% in order to get full credit for it in the gradebook. So 80%, um, I wanna say it's like 27 questions. So I would think that that means you can maybe miss, I don't know, maybe six, five or six um, in order to still get credit. So again, just make sure to review your word roots, um, look over some of the words, and then you should be good to go on that for those of you who've been following along with, with Unit 10. And then for our attendance response for today, we are not doing food. I was able to come up with a question that was not food, although once I got into this list, I realized that there were a lot I had to leave off, so I apologize. Um, but we're looking at movie franchises. So you can only watch three of the following movie franchises for the rest of time. Now that includes every movie in the franchise. So you're drafting the franchise, not just a specific movie. So which three are you going to go with? And then we had the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the Harry Potter movies, Transformers, Despicable Me, um, all the way down. I apologize if I forgot any. Um, I had to break up the DC Universe, the newer ones, um, because that Batman is separate from the Dark Knight trilogy with Christian Bale and some of the earlier movies. Um, but yeah, just, you know, tried to get in. I think I put like 24, 25, but I'm sure that there are some that I missed, um, in which case you can use this other box down at the bottom. I'm sorry, you can only use one. Google Forms only lets me put one other box in. Um, so you would have to do that and then pick two others. But so that's three movie franchises is our poll question for today. Um, and as always, I'll have the results from that on the stream for tomorrow. All right, so let's jump over to um, Animal Farm and the allegory chart. So I'll give you a second here if you want to open, open your own allegory chart. Um, I see we only have, we have four people watching right now, so I appreciate the four of you who are tuning in live. I know everybody has things going on, um, but uh, to the four people who are tuning in live, I appreciate it. Um, so here we'll come down on our allegory chart. Um, there were three characters I asked you to fill in yesterday. They were Napoleon, Snowball, and Molly. Um, kind of different reasons. Molly, it's because, not to spoil it, but Chapter 5 is the last that we hear from Molly. And then Napoleon and Snowball are the two that, you know, I feel are pretty obvious. And there's a moment in Chapter 5 that really kind of hammers home which one of them is which. So actually, we'll come down here to Molly. And um, I will say that Molly, the allegory, she is the allegory for the Russian middle class. And if you come down to the information that I gave you about these different groups, it says that the Russian middle class was mainly concerned with material objects, like having a nicer house, nicer clothes, and they did not feel for the working class that was being beaten down and treated unfairly. They did not speak out against Joseph Stalin because they only really cared about themselves. And then some of them left for other countries that they felt offered more to them individually. So if that doesn't sound like Molly, I mean, that hits her right on the head. So I just included a brief quote here from chapter five, talking about how Molly had disappeared. Um, they didn't really know where she was. And then it turns out that she's been taken in by another human who clips her coat, feeds her sugar, um, you know, gives her pretty ribbons, just like she always wanted. And my, my explanation in here is that Molly's only ever focused on herself, looking at pretty things, and uh, she doesn't really care about animalism. She doesn't really want to contribute to the betterment of the farm. It talks about how she's always trying to skip off of work, and uh, she ultimately leaves for what she thinks is a better situation, just like a lot of the middle class did under Joseph Stalin. So Molly is an allegory for the Russian middle class. All right, and then the other two, a lot of you who are following along probably knew these were the two allegories. You just might not have known until chapter five, which was which. 
Um, but Napoleon is an allegory for Joseph Stalin, and Snowball is an allegory for Leon Trotsky. So obviously these two men were rivals after Vladimir Lenin passed away for who was going to take over, take control of the Russian government. And it eventually was Stalin who would gain control. He would exile Trotsky. And, uh, and this directly correlates to Napoleon and Snowball. They're the two pigs who are kind of fighting for control of Animal Farm. Uh, and it's Napoleon who has Trotsky chased off of the farm uh, by his dogs. Um, and then he is able to take control of the farm for himself. And I just added in a little more Stalin. He was a brutal dictator. I'm sure all of you remember that from social studies. He abused his power. He caused the death of millions of his own citizens with a famine that his government created. So that might be a preview of things to come in the story. He also used the secret police and propaganda to build his power. We're going to continue to see things like that from Napoleon moving forward as well. All right. And then for Trotsky, I just added that um, he had been a military leader in parts of the Russian Revolution, just like Snowball was kind of the leader of the animals in the Battle of the Cowshed. And that Trotsky wanted to spread communism around the world, just like Snowball wanted to focus on spreading animalism to other farms as well. So there's just a number of different connections you could make between those two. I didn't pick out any specific quotes just because I felt like it would be better to give a whole picture of the two of them. And there are just so many different connections that you can make between Napoleon and Stalin and Snowball and Trotsky. So those are the allegories for those three characters. And then we'll be moving forward with finding some others in the specific chapters as we move forward. All right, so that's it for the um, allegory chart for today. We will move into today's actual assignment, which is to read chapter six. And I have a preview here for you. So I had said that in chapter six of Animal Farm, some things to look out for would be, what is work on the farm like? Are any of the roles or expectations changing? You know, do we see all animals trying to pitch in their best to share relatively equally in the work? Or are certain animals taking on certain roles with regard to work or other jobs on the farm? Uh, what changes to animalism do we see? You know, now that the one of the biggest proponents for animalism is gone, now that Snowball's gone, you know, do we see Napoleon and the other pigs sticking to the spirit of animalism or are they kind of going a different route and then finally what is going on with the windmill we talked about how in chapter five that was a huge area of debate between the different factions between snowball and napoleon and uh, now it's been said that the farm is going to move forward and build the windmill so just to see what's going on with that because obviously that was a huge area of contention and the meeting about the windmills would ultimately led to Snowball getting chased off the farm as well. So windmill, definitely an important symbol um, to track moving forward. All right. And then I just mentioned that there was a um, Kahoot running. So um, the pin here, I'll just show it on the screen for a second here. Um, 0459-1962 for anybody who, I mean, the link is in the Google Form, it's in Google Classroom, but if you just go to Kahoot to play, you can just put that link in as well. And then obviously just please make sure that you use your name or a name that I know who it is um, so I can give you credit when you get that 80% or higher score. All right, and then just briefly jumping over to social studies. Um, today, again, you're still working on the biography assignment. All right, just a reminder of, and actually I'll zoom in a little bit here just so everybody can see them, for those of you watching, um, that you're creating a Google slide that needs to include four things, just the basics of your figure's life, so birth and death dates, places, etc., uh, at least one picture, a brief biography, so it doesn't need to be anything major, but just, you know, childhood, education, if there's any like afflictions or any other important things from their background. And then more specifically, you also want a section that explains how your, your person impacted the civil rights era. All right, so if we jump over again 
just to briefly show you um, the example slide that I had done uh, about Ralph David, David Abernathy. You can see I have basic information, birth date, death date. I've got a picture, a short biographical section, and then a, a section on how he impacted the civil rights era. And then again, just please don't forget, you want to include your sources down in the speaker notes. And then I've given you your blank slide upon which you can be creating your, your own slide. Um, you don't have to follow my, my template. You can arrange the information however you want. You can add color, pictures, different texts, fonts, whatever. Um, that's totally up to you. And then just please don't forget that um, you can do more than one figure if you would like. I would just say, you know, duplicate that slide, include it on the same slide deck before you turn it in. And then we'll see where we're at moving forward. Um, originally, I had thought we would be working on this just for this week. But if it's turning out that people are wanting to do more than one person or if they're needing some extra time, uh, because obviously we're not in class, you know, in theory, you're, you're using about half of the time that you would be in class to get work done. Um, and so just trying to make sure that everyone has enough time to do the job that they want to do, um, we might extend this into next week. All right, so just keep working on that. I know that there were a handful of people who expressed interest in doing more than one person. That's great. I would rather give those people some extra time to do a really good job than rush through onto something else. All right, so continue working on your civil rights activist biography slide and social studies. In language arts, you can take the Kahoot on Vocab Unit 10 if you would like, and then read Chapter 6 of Animal Farm. And that's really all that I have uh, for today. Um, I just wanted to mention, and actually I'll probably throw this up in the Social Studies classroom for those of you who didn't see, um, Miss Pierce and, and some of the other people at Indian Creek put together a, um, a video from all of the teachers for all of you students um, just to show that we are missing you and um, just to provide you that opportunity to see our faces and and to remind you all you know that, that we're still here thinking about you and that we all really wish that we were back in school and uh, and getting to 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 be your teachers instead of being at home and having to do all of our e-learning so if you haven't gotten a chance to look at that yet, I think it was a really cool video. It was really well done. Again, Ms. Pierce and, and everyone who helped her out did a great job with it. Um, and so just if you'd like to watch that, you know, it's not anything super long, um, but would hopefully just be a bright spot in, in your day. Um, otherwise, as always, any academic questions, any other questions, um, anybody who wants to just check in and say hello to myself or any of the other teachers, we are always here for you. Um, we're thinking about all of you and, and we want to do anything that we can to help you navigate this time. Um, so please don't hesitate to reach out um, with any questions, anything that you have. Um, but otherwise, that's that's all that I have for you for, uh, for today. So I'll be back again tomorrow. Um, I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their day. Um, I hope everyone stays safe, stays healthy, and uh, I'll, I'll see you then, all right? Everyone have a great rest of your day, and uh, 